Our big story is the win by political novice Joe Kent in Washington's 3rd District. He's a Republican unseating six-term incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler and moving on to the general election. Kent is giving a victory speech at 6.30. We'll have a crew there. In the meantime, Herrera Butler put out a brief statement thanking voters for sending her to Congress six times. She said she was accomplished. She has accomplished many things, writing, quote, some were pleasant surprises like growing my family by three wonderful children and in doing so providing an example for other women that you can serve your country in elected office while raising a young family. Herrera Butler was 31 when first elected to Congress. She's also one of only 10 Republicans who voted to impeach former President Trump, who then backed her opponent. She wrote, some were unexpected and difficult. I'm proud that I always told the truth, stuck to my principles, and did what I knew to be best for our country. For the past six election cycles, Jamie Herrera Butler, the Republican, has won the race to represent Southwest Washington's third congressional district. Now think about that. Every two years since 2010, 2012, 2014, 2016, just like clockwork, Herrera Butler has run and been elected. And now that clock has stopped. Herrera Butler conceded her race just after 5 o'clock tonight. She's behind her challenger, Kent, by 928 votes. Kent will face off against Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez, and Herrera Butler will be watching from home. To help make sense of all this, we're going to lean on two veteran political watchers. The first is Professor Jim Moore of Pacific University, who was nice enough to put on his signature bow tie today and talk about why Kent's victory throws the race wide open in what has been a safe Republican seat. Yeah, it really does. And it does in interesting ways. Remember, this district was redrawn, as every district in the country was, and by all accounts, it became more Republican. So easier for the Republican to hold on to the seat. Now, clearly, the Republican Party is extremely fractured. I mean, there were nine people in this race, and only two of them, kind of maybe three of them, weren't Republicans. There were four major Republican players. So do the Republicans come together and say, we want to keep the seat? Or do those who supported Jamie Huerta Butler say, we support you, we don't want a Trump person, do they then vote for the Democrat? So that'll definitely be fascinating to watch. Herrera Butler was somewhat of a moderate Republican, so you can see why it's not that much of a stretch to think about her voters maybe considering going for the Democrat instead of the Trump Republican, which, by the way, is not to take anything away from Joe Kent. He clearly has tens of thousands of supporters. And I wonder if his support shows that the third district is more conservative than it appeared. It's not clear because there were there were at least two pro-Trump candidates in here. And when you put their votes together, you get about 38% of the total vote in the primary. So does that mean that the whole district is going Trump? I don't think so at this point. There's another real important difference between the primary and the general election. The general election is going to have about twice as many people actually turn out to vote. So it's going to be a more accurate representation of the district as a whole as compared to those who felt really motivated to turn out in the primary election. As the next phase of the race gets underway, we will likely see big money start to pour into this race. The Democrats have a slight edge in the U.S. House and Republicans seem ready to narrow that gap in November, maybe even take control. So if Democrats can swipe this one time safe Republican seat, they'd love it. In the meantime, our political expert Len Bergstein says the candidates need to get to work. These congressional district races most often are determined by who makes the best pitch to people about who can represent them best, who cares mo the most about their issues. And I don't think that either Joe Kent or Perez at this point is a, is a very developed personality uh, on that issue uh, to their voters. A translation would be, you're going to see a lot of ads as soon as the dust settles, which is about now. Washington's primary is sort of late in the campaign season, so there's only about three months left until the general election. It's going to be kind of a sprint to the finish line. And Len agrees with Professor Moore that the one-time safe Republican seat is safe no more. But it sets up a very interesting uh, uh, campaign where this third congressional district, which has been a stronghold for the Republicans for these six terms, uh, and Jamie Herrera Butler has held off challenges very effectively, it might not be quite so easy for the Republicans to hold on to this particular race with an unknown and untested person like Joe Kent. 
It's going to be fascinating. Let us know what you think about this one if you live in the 3rd District. Is Kent your candidate or Perez and why? I'm sure we're going to be covering this a lot, so I look forward to hearing from you and reading your feedback.